think that we ought to get on with it and not have any more delays. Yeah, yeah. My Lords, in following the noble Lord uh, Cameron of Dillington, uh, for whom I have the greatest respect, um, I think the contribution that the noble Lord just made really demonstrates a fundamental difference in approach and understandings and belief in um, systems for, to use the phrase, feeding the world, um, uh, between, I think, perhaps s several of us on this side of the House and the noble Lord. And I'm going to take a very practical example of this because we've actually saw last week, uh, emerging in the mainstream media, reports of a new wheat variety called Jabal. Now, the local Lord, Lord Cameron spoke about our scientists finding solutions for Africa. He spoke about leave it to business. Um, he spoke about only big companies can now develop new varieties um, of crops like wheat. Well, Jabal, which actually means mountain in Arabic, is a new durum wheat, an extremely drought tolerant and heat tolerant uh, form of durum wheat developed for climate resilience. It was developed through the Crop Trust's Wild Relatives project. It was developed between 2017 and 2021, so it was developed over a period of five years, and it was developed working with farmers on the ground in the communities affected. And it is looking to be extremely successful. No big business. Some scientists, I've got no doubt there are some British scientists involved in this, scientists from all around the world, but it's grounded in the communities that need these crops. And it's been done without anyone making huge amounts of money out of it. And I think if we're talking about feeding the world, there's a potential alternative model. However, I'm now going to uh, come back to the detail of these amendments, starting with Amendment 16, already um, very ably introduced by the noble lady Baroness Bakewell of Huntington Mandeville. Um, I don't really think I, I need to add much to that, having attached my name to the amendment. Although I will note that when we come to amendments um, 76 and 77, both of which appear in my name and which the noble lady has also kindly signed, have more or less the same intention um, in clause, inserting in clause 43 instead of earlier in the bill. Um, amendment 77 um, looks at impacts on e UK exports to the EU, as the earlier amendment did. Amendment 76 is broader um, and looks at um, exports around the world and what impacts it might have. Amendment 78, which the noble lady Baroness Bakewell and indeed the noble lady's Baroness Heyman uh, have kindly signed, appearing in my name, indeed addresses some of the points um, that uh, raised by the noble Lord, Lord Cameron um, about it says that regulations under this Act must particularly look at the impact of small and medium enterprises. And I think here perhaps we're not thinking so much about um, enterprises that might be producing uh, these so-called precision bred uh, organisms, but more the farmers using them and small farmers and the kind of impacts that we were addressing in the debate about intellectual property. Um, and indeed the issues of market dynamics and competition, which of course have been such an area of concern with GMOs. Uh, I come finally to Amendment 75, which appears in my name, and the noble lady Baroness Heyman has also very kindly signed this. And I feel like we should perhaps have the noble lady Baroness Noakes here, because I think she would probably be giving me lessons in the structure of bills and exactly how a five-year review should be, should be constructed. But in the noble lady's absence, I've done my best um, to say that there should be a five-year review of how this bill is working. And I think particularly the debate that we, the group discussing animals or plants and what sorts of animals and plants um, provided some powerful ammunition for that discussion. And indeed, the noble Lord, the minister, acknowledged that um, this is a, a bill that will evolve, that will change according to events. Um, but I think we also need to note the way in which this is both a fast-moving area of technology, but also a very fast-moving area of scientific understanding. Uh, I won't uh, go into great depths of what's been roughly described as the new biology, um, but there are huge debates within the science of biology going on right at the moment. Um, some very fundamental debates about the structure uh, of organisms, the structure of life, the structure of ecosystems. And in five years' time, the scientific framework behind the background of this, not just the technology, but scientific understandings, uh, may well have moved on significantly. And surely a bill this controversial 
this complex, this difficult, this technical should have a five-year review built in? I, I must agree with 